Hey guys, my name is Uga. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing the month 7 update of my conscious living minimalism journey that I have started. Now, I have done this already a few times in my life, but every time I start with a new phase, the latest one started 7 months ago, and this is the first update of 2018. Now, what I do in these videos, and I'm going to uh, link a few of the previous ones, is that I try to share with you what were my thoughts over the past few weeks, and then at the end of every video, I share with you some of my empties, but more partly just to do a review, but more to share with you what is the thinking process behind them. So for the past month, what I have been thinking about is something that uh, I've been considering since I moved into this apartment. Now, in a couple of months, it's going to be March, and March is the is the anniversary of when I have signed my lease. And according to Belgian law, uh, because this March is going to be the third year, if I decide to move to another apartment, then I only have to pay one month's penalty instead of three months, right? So um, I have been really thinking about it for the past few months. I'm thinking of going to an apartment that is smaller and that has a balcony and that has large windows because I just love people watching, that's what I do. Um, but also it's just the thinking that over the past two years I have been paying a lot in rent, which I don't mind, I mean I could afford it, but I was almost never in this apartment. It's part of the consulting lifestyle, but also I'm just thinking, in that case what I'm paying for is paying for my things to live. But as I was kind of doing a sort of inventory of all my belongings because that's something that I just started thinking about. I was I wanted to have an assessment of what is a livable space that I could have. I realized I have tons of things and they're all over the place. If you have seen my previous vlogs, and I will link a couple of these, if you've seen my previous vlogs, you will have noticed that every time that I came back, I struggled with trying to put things into place and I always had things on my bed, I always had things on my counter, um, my kitchen was never clean, I always had, th had things in and out. And as I was trying to find a cleaning agency, I went to three agencies and every time it was a bit of a, a complicated. One of them was unethical, another one, I couldn't reach them. The third one, they said, yes, we will find you a, a cleaning person, but then they never got back to me and things like that. And so I was just thinking, so what would it take for me with my lifestyle to be able to live in a contained space, but not have as much clutter? And that's when I started looking at a lot of minimalism journey videos and I realized something. And don't take things this the wrong way, but it almost feels like you have to to be a rich blogger or creative uh, person to be a minimalist in the sense of tossing everything and you know living on tap water and, and going on a bike. Now I'm just pushing the example to the extreme, right? Uh, just um, it's meant to be funny or sarcastic. But going back to my example, I realized. I just, uh, the first time that I got into the minimalism journey, that was about three years ago, it was very easy for me to get rid of the things that didn't serve me, right? So I did get the, rid of all the things that were rips, that were stained, that didn't fit, a lot of things that were poor quality, that I was holding on from since college and things like that. And so that was the first wave and it was pretty easy because these things were just broken or, or useless. But then I was left with a critical mass of things that are actually good quality, that are still working for me, not necessarily the best uh, choice for my current life, but it's not something that I would hate wearing or, or using, etc. And so I realized that maybe I'm too cheap to be a full minimalist because for me if it ain't broken you're not tossing it right um, because I use things and that is my my conclusion I actually have a lot of things that are decent actually above decent they're good and it's just that I refuse to let go of them until they are useless if I have 10 sweaters and three of them are amazing and the other seven are okay I'm still gonna keep all 10 of them so my focus for the next month is going to be that I actually consciously survey the things that I have and wear them a lot such that I get as much wear out of them and then I can let go of them. Uh, it's going to take a long time because 
a lot of the things that remained after my initial purge are relatively good quality and so I don't see myself tossing them after a few weeks. So I decided to start first with all the cosmetics that I have just because these are consumables it's easier for me to just focus on using a few products and then toss them and also for my clothes I've been focusing on wearing the same thing that's why in my latest videos you might notice that I've always been wearing the same black t-shirt the same black turtleneck I absolutely love it because it's a capsule wardrobe but at the same time just knowing that I have let's say 20 pieces that I wear for three or four months straight also means I know which ones stand the test of time and also which ones I just no longer want to wear and by the time I've been wearing them for three or four months I know whether I want to keep them for just this year or whether these are things that are going to transition with me for the next three or four years so how I look at it now is that given the pace at which I am using up my products my clothes etc for my cosmetics I'm gonna need a year or two until I reach that point where I know exactly what I like and then I just stick to it and for my clothes I think uh, every year my collection is going to be roughly the same size if I'm being honest because just the fact of wearing the things that I have I also started being very aware of the things that I like and I did buy a few things I mean I know it's called a no buy but it's more a sort of conscious buying so I did buy a couple of things that I really love and that I have been wearing since so I'm going to do an update on this in a few months just to see whether I managed to to contain what I have but for now I'm going to walk you through some of the new things that I got especially in cosmetics and also some of the things that I have finished and walk you through my thinking as I go through this table of things that I have here if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that in the past two years as a consultant, I've been traveling about 80% of the time. And even when I was here, um, sometimes I would just want to go to London to visit my sister. I once went to France to visit some friends. And I was also every month or two trying to do some Euro trips. So at any given moment in time, I did have two sets of products, wardrobe, everything that I was using, the travel one and the local one. Recently this has definitely slowed down and I'm spending a lot more time in Brussels which means that I get to uh, focus on using certain things more. And so you, that's what you will see reflected in what I'm sharing with you today. So I'm going to share with you some of the empties that I have but also some of the changes that I have introduced in my routine and just general thoughts. First thing I finished is this Neogen uh, stick, it's just a cleanser that I used to take with me every time that I traveled. I used to take it with me for travel for work and then I went on a vacation to Senegal and I was using it every day for two weeks straight and then when I got back and I started traveling less I just started using it basically at home and I really enjoyed using it. That's definitely something that I was um, pleasantly surprised with just because I'm not really into solid cleansers I just feel like they feel like soap so I'd rather use them on my body but this was really amazing on my on my face it had a little bit of tea uh, part uh, tea pieces like tea leaves and that's that was just enjoyable so definitely a product that I would recommend obviously I'm trying to finish a lot of things that I have in my collection so I'm not really purchasing any of these unless I tell you otherwise so that was the first thing I have finished then at a moment in time I was trying to think how do I uh, make sure that I still continue having content that is beauty oriented and that I introduce you to brands while still keeping um, things current so at a, as a specific period a few months ago, I thought, how about I do what the Koreans do when they just have their entire routine using just a single brand? And I tried to do this with this Medicube brand. Uh, it's a Korean brand meant for problematic skin. At the time, I had a bit of, of blemishes, etc. So what I did is that I bought the entire range. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to just make a series on this. But, I mean, I did show it in one of my routines, but it just that... Because I traveled, I didn't always have the same products and I ended up using things at different paces. So the first thing I have finished was is the red serum. That's what it looks like. It smells like tea tree oil and I think that's why I finished it first, just because I really enjoyed using this. Um, for the other products, products, some of them I enjoy more, some of them I take a bit more time. My least favorite product is definitely their cleanser, but this is definitely something that I enjoyed using. and. 
I had gone through a period where I stopped using serums but then having finished this I looked into my stock and I realized that I do have quite a few of them and that I might just start digging them again because why buy these things if I'm not going to use them. Ideally as I finish all my skincare I want to go into uh, the ordinary the Decium brand so they have Neod and other brands um, and start using these just because I find them quite pleasing. I had this Misha anti trouble patch. This is expired. I have used all of them. This is basically a patch that you put on your acne uh, on spots and I only have one single one left but since it's expired I'm tossing them. Plus I no longer have the the zits that are really filled with pus such that you really need to have some such a thing to calm it down. I don't get the angry as it's anymore. It's more like um, smaller pimples so I no longer need something like this. Then in terms of, of body care, I have finished an Oral-B 3D White. So the thing is, with my, uh, with my travel schedule, I realized I had something like three or four toothpastes that were open at the same time, just because sometimes um, I would want to get, get something more in my makeup bag, and so I would take a tiny toothpaste. And other times when I didn't have many liquids, I could afford to take something this big. So um, I do have a couple of others of these, and you will probably see them in the next months, but I just wanted to emphasize the fact that now I'm actually using up my big uh, tubes instead of the tiny ones that I had. I also realized that I had quite a few of these things that I would have just laying around. This is a hand soap. Um, I actually just add water sometimes to dilute it, but this one is completely done. This is from um, the private label of... Is it Carrefour? Maybe it's the a private label of Carrefour, I think. It's called Nectar of Nature. I have the tiniest sink next to my toilet, but I always like go out and use the proper sink. So... I didn't need to have this. Maybe if I have visitors, I might actually put a soap there. But honestly, I realized you can never use it because it's a bit broken. That was broken when I moved in. So it's very difficult to use. And I just figured why well, have all these things that are open at the same time. So in my effort to try to, you know, not have a lot of things everywhere, I'm just trying to see. So can I get by with having just a single soap? I also have another one in the kitchen, but I hate it. Then I finished this black soap from Tia. It's a Moroccan brand. Black soap is something that we use typically as Moroccans for the Hammam ritual, which is a traditional bath. Uh, I didn't grow up going to Hammam, but over the years I just started really enjoying these things. Um, so while I don't do the traditional thing, I love the products associated with it. And so every time that I go to Morocco, I try to bring one. I have just finished this one and I happen to have another one in backup and the, the one that I have is from a brand called Arga Pure and it has lavender essential oil so highly recommend it. I would probably not repurchase simply because I also happen to have other shower gels and I really think they take up a lot of space so I'd rather use them up. So then I'm going to share with you the discovery of the month. So here's what happened. Um, when there was the Black Friday sale with on the Decium website, I ordered um, a, a kit. This kit is something for to slow the hair growth. It's from a brand, the, the chemistry brand. They have a face one and they have a body one. And so they had an offer on this and I think it was 60% off. And I was really curious to try it. And so I ended up buying this thing. I'll show you what it looks like. It's just this basically. Uh, and you're supposed to use it twice a day on your face and body and whatever uh, for eight weeks and then starting that moment you start using a couple times a week just to maintain the effect and it's supposed to help with hair regrowth and you know slowing down you know the pilosity all over your body but here's the thing I ordered it on, on Black Friday so that was in November right but because they had such a demand they only ended up shipping it in January. So I only got this very recently and I've only been using it for a week, but I actually like it. So the thing is, for, in order for you to use this, you have to either um, shave or wax or something, like remove the hair first and then use it. But because I wanted to use it on my body, I thought, you know what, I'm going to use my old trusty um, depilator. And I haven't used that in years. I've had it for forever. And I started using this on my legs and it just hurt like crazy and I was thinking why am I even doing this myself and then I thought maybe I should try waxing but then I realized that would be so time consuming and expensive and painful and then I remembered um, I had a couple freebies from a hotel 
and I had this thing shaving cream and a very cheap razor I don't even know what it is and I thought you know what I'm gonna use it and get this I have never shaved in my life in my life so that was very scary because I was thinking because growing up I was always told you know if ever you shave you're gonna have the coarsest blackest thickest hair ever and you're going to regret it all your life but then I always saw these American girls in their videos that always have a, a razor and I'm always thinking but why are their legs so smooth if they have this razor and they obviously shave but I never ever um, actually crossed the line and did it but I was you know in such pain with that depilator that I thought you know what I really want to try this product so why not let me shave so I used this it was my first time I was so scared I didn't even know how to use that and, and I was thinking I'm gonna get so many cuts all over um, and this is the cheapest thing I mean it's a hotel freebie but it was so fast I was just thinking oh my god why why didn't I know about this and so what I did is that I went to the store and I bought this Venus razor so this one is the oops is the fancy fancy thing you know Gillette invented basically the disposable razor so they have all the technologies and all this crap so five ra five blades uh, I don't know why they felt the need to make it pretty because it's a girl's thing but that stuff is expensive that was almost 20 euros because it is expensive and I bought it at a tiny store because I don't go to the big supermarkets so it was it was very very expensive but I like it and then to shave with it I couldn't find any shaving cream so what I ended up doing is just using the lotions I went online and I was like googling what do you use instead of a shaving cream and so they said you could also use your conditioner I wasn't gonna waste my conditioner on this or you could use a body lotion so I just started using these ones that I have from the hotel they I have tons of these right and I stopped taking any lotions months ago but I still have all the stuff from when I was just traveling so I decided that this is a great way for me to start using them and I'm very happy about this 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 discovery because I'm not gonna wax anymore I can do this in my shower it's just very very fast and if I use this properly hopefully I'm gonna get some results I have a lot of faith in the DCM company overall so I have high expectations of this product so that's that for the body uh, then we move to hair because I have some revelations to share with you guys so the first thing that I have finished is this macadamia with detailing cream I've had it for a while I love the macadamia brand but this thing was basically over and I no longer needed it because my hair is short now I'm going to cut it next week so it's going to be shorter than this and I'm going to also touch up the roots and it's going to be cute again but I absolutely love having this short hair. It's so low maintenance. I just can't get over it. I just love it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm tossing this product. This is a shampoo. It's the Curl Clarity Shampoo from As I Am. Now, a few months ago, I had tried the As I Am butter. And that was the double butter. That, that's what I was using on my hair when it was longer. And I absolutely loved it. And so I decided that all my routine should switch to this, this lineup. But this thing doesn't clean my hair. It's supposed to be a clarifying shampoo for curly hair. It doesn't clean my hair at all. Like, it doesn't take anything. My scalp would still be greasy. My hair would still be greasy. So I just, I tried it so many times. Like, I, I, anytime I would use probably a quarter of a bottle, like wash my hair four times, and it still wouldn't clean it. So I just decided, now it's basically empty. It's down to here. But I just decided that I'm going to toss it, and I'm not going to repurchase it. Um, I'm not made for these soft shampoos so this is something I'm tossing I'm also tossing the equivalent which is um, the Deva Curl No Poo Decadence sorry it looks yucky because it's been sitting in my shower but uh, this one is down to here uh, which is sad but again this is something that I have been using for a long 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 time because I only shampoo my scalp but once I experienced what it's like to have clean scalp, I just couldn't go back to this. Like, I tried it uh, yesterday. Yesterday, I tried this one, and then I tried this one, and both of them didn't work. Neither of them works, actually. And so I ended up reverting to the new shampoo that I have been using, which is the Bumble and Bumble Sunday Shampoo. This is something that girls with greasy hair all over YouTube recommend. Like, it, these are the girls who typically say, oh, I love the Oribe texturizer and I always use the Batiste dry shampoo and blah, blah, blah. So I was thinking, this is not for my hair texture. I tried it, I love it. 
I love it, love it, love it. And that's what I'm using right now. It's not color safe. I will link my current hair care routine. It's not color safe. If you have colored hair like I have, don't use it. But it's really good. So I'm definitely going to go and try to find um, another shampoo from the Bumble and Bumble. I'm probably not going to buy the full size just because I love this one so much. But I'm going to try to find a smaller sized, like the travel one from Bumble and Bumble and see if I like it. And if I do, then I'm going to start using that more often. And this only once a month. But for now, that's what I'm using once a week. And it just makes my scalp so clean and fresh that I can just use whatever product I want afterwards. Not that I use much, but fine. And I have finished the Deva Curl One Condition Decadence. So I have added a lot of water to this and etc. So it's completely gone. But I do have another one. This is the 32 ounces bottle. So that's almost a liter. But I have another one. Um, going forward, I'm not sure I'm going to use this. Like, even if I have a bigger bottle, it's going to last me probably a year or whatever. I don't think I need the conditioner step. Because I, I think I can... Because my hair is so short, now it's it's tall, it's it's longer, but like, because I'm, I plan on keeping my hair sh so short, it shouldn't tangle much, and so I wouldn't really need this. So for now, I'm going to use it because I have it, and it's an amazing product, but I don't plan on repurchasing it. Then I have a few lip products, because... Um, recently, as I was doing the inventory of everything that I have, you know, trying to have the... I still cannot assess how much surface I'm gonna need for my new place so it might take several weeks until I have a sort of visual of this but I was going through my things and trying to see is there anything expired are there any things I want to put on my in my bedroom in my bathroom so that I start using them more often so that's what happened um I had I have been using just an oil on my lips because they've been dry it's winter and then I was trying to find what are the things that I could be using. So first thing is I have finished this Avon Care Cocoa Butter Lip Butter. It's an amazing lip butter. I've been using it forever. Uh, very moisturizing, quite inexpensive, and I loved it. So I finished this one. And then I started looking, so what else do I have in my collection that could replace it? So I tried to go to this one, which is the Cocoa Lip Butter, and I've had it for a while. But this thing, the, since the first time I, that I used it, it's very... It's very moisturizing, but my lips react to it. So the moment I put this on, I have like fire on my lips. So it happened quite a few times. I'm not sure why. So I just decided not to use it. I was like, I'm going to give it a try one more time. I gave it a try. It was My lips were so soft, but then they started burning. So I decided to toss it. This is not for me. Then I have this Blistex Lip Relief Cream. But this is something that I bought for quite some long time ago. It is made in the USA, but I bought it in Germany. And that's a very white, ugly lip lip um, thing. Like, it's almost like a, it looks like a toothpaste when you apply it. And I bought it when I was in Germany and I had forgotten to, to get my lip um, moisturizer and I was on Accutane, that was two years ago. So I bought this. Uh, and so I was like, let me try to use it. And then when I started opening it and I wanted to squeeze the product out, some water came up first. So what this tells me is that the product separated in the tube. And so I wasn't comfortable using it. Plus, once you, you, you opened it, you're supposed to use it for after 12 months. And I think we're just past the 12 month mark since I had used it. Because I remember I bought it in like in spring of 2018, oh, 16. So like... I bought it in May or something like that. So now it's been a couple of years now. So I should not use it. So I'm tossing it. And then I have this Lush lip scrub that has expired. This is almost my second or third time buying a Lush, Lush product, Lush lip scrub and not using it. So I just decided I'm never ever again buying lip scrubs just because I'm too lazy to use them. I use them at first and I'm happy. And then, yeah, I stop. And then this is the CoverGirl mascara. It's completely dried out. I don't recommend it because... I had bought this quite some time ago, like a long time ago, because everybody was raving about it. And uh, I didn't like the original version. I didn't like the waterproof version. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to buy this ever again. Right now, I'm just using a simple one from NYX. It's very inexpensive. But even that, I'm not a fan of it. But to be completely honest, I have black eyelashes, so I don't really need to wear uh, that much makeup. A very quick resolution. I know these episodes get too long and we always get to the 20-30 minutes mark, but it's a reflection of how I think about things, you know, 
simplifying my life and stuff. So um, you guys know I love these candles. They're from Rituals. Uh, it's called the Holy Smoke Private Collection. They're a little bit more expensive than the normal ones. And the only one that I buy is this one. I always buy it. It's 25 euros. It's less expensive than the Diptyque, the Jo Malone, the uh, Sir Trudon, etc. But I just love it. And that's what I have lit all the time. Now, you you they come, the packaging is good, right? And so I remember I was just like, I'm going to keep the packaging of this because it's nice and I can reuse it and I can have a few of these side by side. And then I just realized, but why? Because things like this just encourage me to just have useless knickknacks all around. And honestly, if I want a pot, I can buy a pot. But I'm just going to try to find little things to put in it. And then it's been sitting on my vanity, not my vanity, but just like my Ikea thing for months and I never put anything in it. So I just decided it's time to let it go. So I'm gonna recycle it. I'm gonna put it in the glass recycling and that's gonna be it. So going forward, every time that I have a candle like this one, this one is still working, I'm still working on it. I'm not gonna keep the, the, the glasses. I know like five years ago, I was really into recycling and upcycling all these um, Bath & Body Works candles, but I think it's almost like a, a passage, like a rite of passage. I feel, I feel a lot of people who are on YouTube go through all these phases of, oh, I love the Bath & Body Works, and you know what, I'm gonna have like fairy lights, and, and I'm gonna swatch all of these things, and blah, blah, blah. Some people never move from that phase, but for me, I just feel like I'm way past that, and and it's not an age thing, it's just, a, um, I feel like it's, my taste has changed. And so I'd rather not have all these sweet candles, I'd rather have, you know, this one, but fine. And so the last things that I have are this one. <laughs> I'm very excited excited about this. This is an Oral-B slash Brown. It's the same company, basically. Um, toothbrush that is unbelievably smart. Like, that's that thing is too complicated for me. Like, it comes with a lot of features. And I bought this also many, many, many weeks ago. I think it was right before Black Friday sale. And it's something close to $300, but I got it for less than 100 euros. Um, so I really liked it. I got it shipped to my sister's place, but then I didn't go and get it. I absolutely love this thing. I'm very excited about it. I've been using it. So maybe it's a little bit gross. But uh, it was just, I was watching some random YouTuber, a British guy. And he recommended it, and I ended up buying it. So he just had the link, and I clicked it, and I bought it. But then it turned out to be much better than what I thought. It's a bit complicated to, to set the app and all of that stuff, so I haven't even done it. I just use it as a toothbrush, but it's just amazing. Like, you have manual toothbrushing. Then you transition to the mechanical one. So if you have an electric toothbrush, you definitely know the difference. But this is like another step up so I really like it and I finished my very first big tub of tea from Kusmi, Kusmi tea this is the cashmere chai uh, if you guys remember I had this whole um, drawer not drawer but like a shelf in my in my kitchen and my kitchen is super tiny and um, that was filled with teas and I just I just realized I have a nail in in my wall so I could hang something but fine I never noticed it I've been living here for two years I never realized I have a nail here which means that I can actually put my own nails in the wall if I feel like it. Anywho, back to the topic. Teas, yeah. So I had the entire shelf filled with teas, etc. And it was just overflowing because my kitchen is super tiny. You've seen it in so many videos. And so I just decided that I was going to go on a tea ban and I'm not going to buy anything. Now, I did end up buying some uh, oregano from Morocco because, you know, Morocco, that's the best thing oregano from the atlas that's when i went to school so the atlas region has all these very nice herbs that grow in the mountain and they're really amazing and paralleled so if ever i have a stomach ache and i have a very sensitive stomach I can, there are a lot of things i cannot eat so i'm always like that grandma person with 17 medication just because there are a lot of things that i cannot digest but if i don't feel like having any medicine i just have a pack of this and it's just amazing so I did buy a couple boxes of that, but for everything else, I decided I wasn't going to buy any more teas until I finished these things, and I do have backups of all this stuff. So this is the first big tub that I finished, and I feel that once this has started, I'm going to finish a lot of the tubs going forward. 
so that's that. And then the last remark I had is about these hangers. So every time that I went to buy one of my dresses, like my all 90% of my work dresses are Hugo Boss. Uh, before I used to have a lot of Tahari, but because I haven't been to the US in two years, I don't think that I'm gonna have any more Tahari dresses, at least in the coming year or two. I don't plan on going there while Donald Trump is still president, just so that you know. Um, <laughs> so hopefully he doesn't get re-elected. But, <laughs> um, so this is a Hugo Boss, um, like a hanger. They always give me these, they're really nice, etc. I just don't like having this in my, in my, um, closet plus every time that they give me one it's it looks different than the other so i have some that have hugo boss in red others in in orange i know first world problem but the thing is i'm aiming to have a very very minimalistic um closet i want to have a capsule wardrobe and so i just thought you know what i need to toss these because i already have mine that are wooden they're very inexpensive i got them from alpha second Cirque, and some other ones i got them from marjan both of them in casablanca in morocco so i'm like ah I have I have what I want. If ever I want to go really, really, really fancy, I'm going to buy a set of very nice hangers. But for now, I'm not going to use these free ones just because they were always like all over the place in my apartment, but they didn't have clothes on them. I, I don't know why I was holding on them. So again, another thing that I'm going to recycle. And hopefully as I carry these things, um, I mean, this pattern of me trying to use what I have and also like going very consciously throughout my apartment and seeing the inventory, maybe I will be able to move in a few months because between this March and next year's March any month I can move out and actually I will only pay one month of penalty so that's really good for me because I really want to downsize so these are my reflections for the first month of 2018 I'm glad I said 2018 because I've been saying 2017 for so long but uh yeah so if you like this I'm going to link the entire playlist of this topic and hopefully you like it you share it with your friends and more of you guys are going to be interested in just being more conscious about what you're getting and also just making sure that your environment has all the right positive energy. Until my next video, I just hope that you have a lot of positive energy in your space and that you're working on your own journey. Take care.